I am Carly Verhoeven. I'm at the Region of Waterloo Administrative Headquarters on Frederick Street in Kitchener. I'll be speaking with Kate Hagerman, Cultural Heritage Specialist, about the Ion Public Art Project. There are 15 pieces of art with seven to be selected. If you'd like to learn how to get involved, stay tuned. We'll cover all those details. But first, let's take a look at some of the Ion construction closures happening in our region. Short-term lane closures may be required to finalize work on Northfield Drive in Waterloo. Lane closures and intermittent pedestrian access closures will occur periodically on the railway crossings at Beringer, Columbia and University to complete the installation of temporary and permanent railway signals. Signage will be in place to direct pedestrians as required. The Laurel Trail is closed along the west side of the Clay and Glass Gallery and at the Perimeter Institute. Short-term lane closures may be required to complete work on Caroline to install the overhead catenary system. King from Herb to William is now open to two-way traffic. King and Wellington is closed until approximately the end of December. King from Victoria to Moore, including the King and Moore intersection, is closed for the construction of the King Street grade separation until approximately spring of 2017. King from Victoria to Francis and Charles from Victoria to Benton will require short-term lane closures to install the overhead catenary systems in early 2017. Duke and Frederick and Frederick and King are both closed until approximately late December to finish the installation of LRT track. Construction of the Kitchener City Hall Ion Stop is still ongoing. Ottawa from Mill to Lilac is closed until late December. Hayward at the railway tracks is closed until late December. Local traffic is maintained on Hayward up to the railway crossing. Work to build the fairway ion stop and installation of LRT track is still ongoing. I spoke with Kate Hagerman, Cultural Heritage Specialist for the Region of Waterloo about the Ion Public Art Project and the different artworks in the selection process. Hi Kate, it's nice to see you again. It's been a while since we spoke about the Ion Public Art Project that was earlier this summer. Can you give us an update on what's happened? Sure, it's a really exciting time. Since uh, we met last time, the artists have been doing their detailed proposals and now they're here at the region ready for public comment. Can I show you some of them? Absolutely. The first one is Fabric of Place. It's um, a wall-based piece that talks about diversity through different fabric types. We have Arch Loop Whirl. It's a wall-based piece that is pl uh, play on fingerprints and how people are connected through their genetic diversity. Uh, the next one is Shaping Residency. It is based on our local Pennsylvania Dutch tradition of fracture drawing and it's birds, local birds, represented in that way in s as sculptures. We have uh, a bench that is made out of an actual ion uh, rail tie and it's made into a spinal cord that represents the spine of the community, what ion will be, and also the history of manufacturing in the region. Uh, we have a digital solar clock that is a reimagining of the sundial. It actually projects uh, digital time onto the ground using the sun and no moving parts. The, uh, we have network, which is um, uh, to be located at Research and Technology Park as an option and it has uh, a whole series of metal that's connected and looks like um, cloud computing or a network of ideas and also feels like a forest. We have uh, a an glass artwork piece that has uh, two different artists working in collaboration. Um, a glass artist that does abstract works as well as a local First Nations artist and they um, create artworks on two separate pieces of glass that would interplay with light. We have um, um, a mosaic piece that would be based on a, a wall and it is actually designed for a fairway stop and it has um, fabric pieces that have existed and been very popular since the time that the mall was first created. We have um, a playful storytelling piece that tells the stories of the history of Mill Street location, um, including things like the Concordia Club and Christian Eby, a local healer, and uh, J.M. Schneider. We have another very whimsical piece that's called uh, Ca Because Cats Can't Fly. It has a cat on a bicycle and the wheels of the bicycle actually move with the wind and the light um, within the metal sculpture reflects. Uh, there is Continuum, and this is a, a storytelling piece that looks at the history of the region, looking forwards and backwards. Um, a real timeline of the development of the region made in a wall-based piece. 
Lo is a, a sculptural piece. It's a, a huge uh, three-dimensional sculpture that changes as you look at it from different positions and really speaks to the importance of water. Um, and we also have a piece called We Belong, and it is uh, a, another piece that speaks to the diversity inclu and inclusion within our community. It has, um, it's inspired by different fabrics from around the world and has human-scaled sculptures that people can interact with. Lucent Observatory is uh, uh, an oculus or uh, an observatory that you can experience and play with light. You can enter and exit and uh, see how it changes through the day and night. And lastly, we have the passenger. And this piece is um, actually made from real taxidermied animals and clothes. Um, the artist puts them together in a, to a sculptural figure where people will happen upon it and, uh, and be surprised that it's not actually a human when it's a uh, human scale. Now, that's a lot of art, and it's very impressive, also very diverse. So how many pieces are going to be selected, and where could we see this end up? Right. So we have the seven, seven uh, station stops that are selected as locations, and we will choose up to seven artworks. So out of the 15, a little less than half um, will be hopefully be in commission for our community. And this is for the ION stop. So if the public wants to get involved and maybe give some of their feedback for their choice, how can they do that? We would love to hear from everyone. It, you can visit us here at 150 Frederick Street. Um, the display is up until December 9th, so just come in um, and, and look around. You can also go online to www.regionofwaterloo.ca slash public art, and there's information on all of the projects online as well as an online survey. If you would like to see the different pieces of artwork, you can actually come down to the Region of Waterloo Administrative Headquarters at 150 Frederick Street. You can also go online to www.regionofwaterloo.ca slash public art, where you can actually provide your feedback on the different pieces of art and the seven that are to be selected. For more information on ion construction, visit rideion.ca. For Rogers TV, I'm Carly Verhoeven.